Hello again and grace and peace to you today in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope that you've had a chance to read through the book of Ephesians and if you haven't well you can start today. Uh, this video and the next video will focus on Ephesians chapters 1 through 3 and I will complete that on the second video. Now, you may remember that Ephesus was an important port city on the west coast of Asia, which is present-day Turkey. It had one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Temple of Artemis, who is also called Diana uh, by the Romans. The city was very fascinated with magic and the occult, which is much like our modern-day society. Did you know that witchcraft is the fastest growing religion in the United States? It's kind of sobering, isn't it? Well, just like the Ephesians, we need to be reminded that the power of God is far greater than any other power and that all things were created by him and for him. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. All things are under his feet and that he has been given as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus is the one who was raised from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all rule, all authority, and all powers in, and dominion in this age and in the age to come. This is from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 20 through 23. Overall, Ephesians unveils the mystery of the church and we see Jesus in every chapter. In chapter 1, we see him as Redeemer and Resurrected Lord who reigns as King over all. In chapter 2, he is the Peacemaker reconciling man to God, which makes possible rec reconciliation between people. Chapter three tells us of his indwelling presence within our hearts. In chapter four, Jesus gives ministry gifts to his church. And in chapter five, we see him as the model husband of his bride, the church. Finally, in chapter six, we see Jesus as the Lord, mighty in battle, equipping his army for spiritual warfare. Now, as we move on and talk about Ephesians, I want you to recognize that basically Ephesians is divided into two parts. Chapters one through three deal with the churches and the believer's position in Christ, while chapters four through six deal with our practice, or in other words, our behavior as believers. The term in Christ, in him, with him, and through him are used several times throughout chapters one and two. If you've ever doubted your identity and purpose as a believer, read these two chapters over and over and over and you'll be encouraged and shout a hallelujah. I did as I reread them again today. As a reminder, here is a list of what Christ gives us as believers. This is from Ephesians 1 verses 1 through 14. Number one, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Number two, he chose us for a purpose to be holy and without blame before him in love. Number three, we are adopted as sons and daughters. Number four, we are accepted in the beloved. I say this to myself when the enemy comes with his false accusations and his lies. Number five, we are redeemed through his blood, forgiven of our sins. Number six, he makes known to us the mystery of his will. Seven, we have appointed, excuse me, we have obtained an inheritance to the praise of his glory. Number eight, 
we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. Now I love that. As disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are sealed and we have a guarantee, an assurance of our inheritance in him. That's another hallelujah. Now chapter two tells us, number one, we, are, we were dead in our trespasses, but now we are made alive together with Christ by the grace which, which we have been saved through faith. Number two, we are seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Number three, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Number four, we are now joint heirs with the commonwealth of Israel. God has created one new man made of Jew and Gentile, making peace, reconciling us both to him in one body. Number five, Jesus is the chief cornerstone, building his church into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Sometimes it's helpful to list things this way to help us remember. We'll talk more about the church on the next video. Now, do you remember our three what questions? Number one, what do these chapters teach us about God? Number two, what do they teach us about mankind and ourselves? And number three, what do I need to, to change in my life in order to obey God's word and become more like Jesus? The first two questions are especially pertinent for these chapters we've just talked about. In the next video, we will focus on the church's position in Christ. Key words to remember are purpose and power. We will see what God intends to do through the church and the power given to her in order to achieve his purposes. So I'll see you next time. God bless you.